Hey guys, Ollie here, Game Room Hero, back at it again with another video. Got something a little different for you guys today, and that's because I'm doing my first ever pickups video. Uh, I don't normally do too many non-scripted videos, so I thought it'd be fun to do something a little more casual and show off some of the games I picked up uh, over the holiday, like the last two months or so. I haven't had a huge haul like this, so that's partially why I haven't, but I've got 25 games to show you guys today. Super excited, so let's get started. All right, all right, so I got a big stack of games right here, and we're just gonna jump right into it. So one of the first games I got is Sonic Forces for the Xbox One. Uh, a lot of you guys might not know this, but I'm a pretty big Sonic the Hedgehog fan. Uh, the 3D ones have admittedly been very hit or miss. Uh, I got some flack a little while ago when I did the Sonic Heroes review and uh, Nostalgia wore off. Like, generally, I tend to like his games for the most part. Uh, this one I have some definite thoughts on uh, for a number of reasons. I actually do have the whole thing recorded, so I may do a review for this soon, so I'm not going to tell you exactly what I thought of it, but uh, it's it definitely doesn't compare to, like, Generations for that matter. Uh, so moving on here, uh, Assassin's Creed Syndicate, also for the Xbox One. Uh, I work at the Microsoft Store, as some of you guys might know. I had a video about that a while ago. It's one of the main reasons I don't review first-party games on the Xbox anymore, because, I, you know, I worry about uh, sounding biased or something like that, which I'm not, but I would have to put a disclaimer in it. It sort of changes things, but I work there, so I can usually get a pretty good deal on games. Uh, there's an employee discount and all that, so I picked up Syndicate because I missed it, and I was looking to play Origins. Uh, I've only gotten a couple hours into this one, but it's a lot better than Unity, which was the last one I played. So I'm enjoying the Victorian aesthetic. I like the grappling hook, so it's a pretty cool game. If, if you missed this one, I highly recommend checking it out, especially if you're thinking about going into Origins. All right, next up we have, here's an interesting one, Rock Band 2. So you might not know this, but I'm actually a pretty, pretty big on collecting. 360 was a huge system for me back in the day, and being that we're past that generation now, you see a lot of deals come up, so uh, GameStop over the holidays had like a... I, f I forget what the deal was, but it was like I... You bought two and you got two free pre-owned games, so I picked up a lot of 360 games there. And uh, one of the main things I'm trying to do right now is rebuild my 360 collection. Uh, back when the new consoles came out, I... Hadn't had my first job yet, I'd just gotten into college, so uh, I didn't have a lot of money and ended up selling a lot of that stuff, which I really regret. So, Rock Band 2, a lot of fond memories of this one. I love the Rock Band series. Me and my brothers, we would play through the campaigns on these ones, and the World Tour mode in the first two games is incredible. I don't know why they never brought it back in any of the others, but fantastic game. Good to have it around again. All right. Next up, okay, this one's a cool one. Another 360 game, uh, also from that GameStop deal, Prince of Persia, the reboot from 2008. Uh, this game is pretty fantastic from what I remember. This, this is another one I'm rebuilding for my collection, but really cool art style, uh, kind of simplistic platforming and, and stuff. I remember it getting flacked for basically giving you instant lives. Like, you, you would just respawn back every single time. Uh, it, it was a pretty simple game, but really satisfying. I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, I would love to see them continue in this style, in this series, but I don't think that's ever going to happen, unfortunately. But really solid game for the 360. Very cheap now, and you can pick it up on the PS4 as well. It's not compatible with the One, unfortunately, but highly recommend that game. All right. Next up. Okay, okay this one's pretty cool. So I'm a huge huge, huge Elder Scrolls fan. I've played most of the games at this point, uh, but my personal favorite, and the first one I played actually, was Oblivion. Uh, so the other thing about my 360 collecting is as I'm going back, uh, a lot of the games that really were important to me, uh, I, I feel meant a lot to me as a, you know, developing as a gamer. I wanted to go back and get the collector's editions for some of those, so I picked up the collector's edition for Oblivion. This one's really cool. You get like a septum token, uh, they've got the making of the game in there. You got the map and the usual stuff, but 
really nice to have as someone who's a huge fan of this game, and it works on the Xbox One, which is great, because I can pop it in my new system and play it there, but if you've only ever played Skyrim, or if, if you just missed Oblivion, you played Morrowind or something like that, I highly recommend you play this. Uh, the 360 version in many ways is still kind of the one to own if you want to play with a controller. You can't do that on the PC to this day, but this will play on the Xbox One, and if you have the One X, it'll actually play it in 4K. So it, as far as console versions go, this is the one to go with. Can't say enough good things about this game. Highly recommend. All right. Well, next two up, I suppose. <laughs> so these two I got on eBay uh, for around 15 bucks, and it's the Call of Duty Black Ops games. So I got the limited edition of Black Ops 1 and then standard of Black Ops 2, but I paid 15 bucks, which uh, I think is pretty good. Uh, a lot of the backwards compatible games, especially like the Call of Duties or Red Deads, that sort of thing, they tend to shoot up in price. So the fact I could get the limited for this one uh, and also pick up Black Ops 2 in that same bundle turned out to be a good deal. I mean, there's not a whole lot to say about these games, but I will say the Black Ops 1 came out at a time in my life that was, uh, you know, the middle of my... I was like 16 or so. Uh, me and my friends have played this one a lot, and I I've never been the hugest Call of Duty guy, but I have some really fond memories of this one, and uh, definitely cool to have the collector's edition of that now, and be able to look back on it, so to speak. Uh, Black Ops 2, a bit of a different story. Didn't play it until years later, but uh, my friend uh, at the time, Daniel, uh, we would go over to his place, and I was part of like a film crew. Uh, so we would go over and we would play Black Ops 2 until like 6 a.m. most nights and while, while I was trying to get into film school and we, we would just go and play Buried all day and it was fantastic. So this is the first time I've got my own copy of this game, but uh, pretty stoked to have it. Maybe I'll even go back and play some of the classic uh, zombies maps and such, so to speak. So really great to have that one too. All right, next up. So I got this one for Christmas for my brother. Uh, this is Okami HD for the Xbox One. Uh, I've heard fantastic things about Okami. I know it's supposed to be like a Zelda-like game and you've got the paintbrush and everything, so definitely interested to check this one out. I haven't started it yet, I confess. I got a couple other cool games for Christmas that I've been busy with, but uh, definitely one I want to check out, and I may even review it if you guys like. Uh, let me know down in the comments if you're interested in seeing her view of Okami HD. But uh, super cool to have it, definitely gonna get around to it real soon. Okay. Oh, this one's kind of cool. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is Lost Planet for the Xbox 360, but this is the Colonies edition of Lost Planet. And what's really cool about this edition is it was cross-platform, so you could play Lost Planet against the Windows players and the Xbox 360 players. I don't know, truthfully, if the service is still up for that or not, but this is one of the first games I actually ever did a video review for on my old channel, uh, which... Give me all the flack you want, but uh, if you look up Xbox Kid 9155 or maybe I'll even put a link up there somewhere so you can check out the old review. Uh, one of my bigger reviews on that channel, really enjoyed it. Uh, this actually came in a triple pack, if you notice on the back there. I don't know if the camera will catch it, but it's a not for resale copy. So this came as part of a triple pack with like Devil May Cry 4 and Dead Rising. And I, I remember I got that one Christmas and just played the hell out of all those games. So super cool to have this one back. I adore Lost Planet. The original is fantastic. If you've only ever played two, or, or God forbid, three, you need to check this one out. Super cool soundtrack, great campaign, and get the Colonies edition because it has a few additional features. Okay, what's next here? Oh, here we go. So this is one I'm definitely gonna be doing a review on, one I've been playing a lot recently, and that is Horizon Zero Dawn on the PS4. This is the complete edition. Uh, my girlfriend actually picked this one up for me. But, wow, <laughs> this is a cool game. Uh, I really enjoyed Zelda, obviously, earlier last year, and I finally got around to playing Horizon, and it's, it's everything they say about it. Gorgeous. It, it, I, I just, it, I am just sucked in. It's, it's crazy how big this game is and how many things there are to do. I mean, 
As, as far as I'm concerned, this and Bloodborne are like the definitive PS4 games of the generation thus far. Really fantastic, really love it so far. Uh, working on it still, uh, gonna definitely have a review for it. Uh, but yeah, Horizon Zero Dawn, fantastic game. Okay, uh, we talked a little bit about Elder Scrolls before, and uh, you know, actually, let me grab this guy. And uh, I've got <laughs> two copies of Skyrim here, so one for the Switch, which is the new edition, and then the Xbox 360 edition. So the 360 edition, I really just picked up because I had it on the 360 and I want to rebuild my library. Uh, I probably, compared to Oblivion, I barely played Skyrim at the time. I got through the main story, I did a few quests, I completed the Dark Brotherhood, and I think that was basically it. So I didn't put a huge amount into Skyrim. At, at most, I would say like 25 or 30 hours. I know lots of people who put in way more than that, but uh, that's the reason I got it on the Switch, actually, is because I wanted to, uh, one, have a new game to play on my Switch, because I finished Zelda a long time ago, and I wanted something to take on the go, and Skyrim just seemed perfect. So picked it up. I've played a lot more of it now, and there's a lot of like the DLC and things that I've just never done. So really cool, not my favorite Elder Scrolls game, but fantastic on the Switch. I mean, if you're looking for something portable, this is a good way to go. And uh, yeah, it's Skyrim. What more do you want me to say about that one? Highly recommend if you're looking for something else on the Switch. Okay. Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, so I picked up a couple interesting games while I was going through that GameStop sale. Uh, this one here, uh, it's a 360 exclusive. I wanna, I definitely wanna get all the exclusive games. I didn't own this back in the day, but this is Ninja Blade, uh, which I hear is kind of more of a generic hack and slash type deal. I haven't tried it yet, but uh, it just reminded me of Ninja Gaiden, so everybody loves that, so I picked it up. And it's, uh, it's from Software, so uh, always interesting to check out their titles that are non-Souls games. So I thought, Ninja Blade, why not? Let's give it a shot. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, in the same vein as kind of Horizon Zero Dawn, we've got uh, Enslaved Odyssey to the West. Uh, I know this is based off a book. I remember reading a ton about it in like magazines at the time. Uh, I believe this was like a 2010 release. Uh, supposed to be really solid and a great single player game, which I'm always a fan of. Unfortunately not compatible. Uh, I need to get another 360 in the house to really uh, play some of these games, but uh, definitely one I'm looking forward to checking out. And I love Ninja Theory stuff. I thought Heavenly Sword was a really cool game, albeit a little bit flawed. Uh, and De <laughs> DMC Devil May Cry. Uh, that game gets a ton of flack and it is awesome. I don't care what anybody says. So big fans of these guys, definitely want to check this one out. Okay. Uh, next one up on the three, on 360 list again. Uh, I picked up Skate 3. I've never played any of the Skate games. Actually, that's a lie. I did borrow Skate 2 from a friend back in the day, but I've, I've never owned one of them and I've never gone through them. Uh, Skate 3 is compatible on the Xbox. I gotta have a physical copy. And uh, it looks great on there, it plays great. I've been having a good time and, uh, you know, soundtracks on all these games is just always killer. So I always find a few new things to add to my workout playlists and things like that. So, uh, Skate 3, really solid. If you missed it, pick it up. EA, make Skate 4. Let's, come on. <laughs> okay. Uh, here's, here's a little, uh, a CAG one. Uh, I picked up Sneak King. They had that at GameStop and uh, I didn't own this again back in the day, but it's like, I feel like you have to have the Burger King games if you're going to collect for the 360. Uh, on that note, my eventual 360 goal really is uh, I'd like to have a complete collection one day. It's definitely was a really big console for me. I was always a Nintendo kid up till that point and that was the first Xbox and uh, that, that I picked up and I remember that being a real revelation for me playing online and checking out all this stuff so that system I really would love to collect everything for at some point and uh, specific goal for me is I would love to have like every dashboard version of the 360 just like a couple consoles lined up one day but you know I'm a college student so uh, here and there I pick up a game for a couple bucks and it works out so <clears throat> Moving on. Okay, here we go. Uh, Sean White snowboarding for the Xbox 360. 
I love this game. Uh, I had the I have the digital version still purchased on my account, but I remember I bought it. Uh, because uh, that SSX reboot was coming out uh, back in like 2012 or so. So I remember I bought this in like 2010. It took SSX like another two years to come out. And I ended up playing this and absolutely loving it a lot more than the, the rebooted SSX. I was a big fan of like Tricky and SSX3 back in the day, but this game is pretty solid. It's got, it's got a decent soundtrack, a little bit... Uh, uh, not too many tracks on there, but... Really cool game. Uh, I, I this was like my favorite, uh, just kind of hang out, kick back on the couch after school game back in high school. So I'd come home, I'd pop this in, and it was just a really good like stress reliever. And I hope they make it compatible someday because I love Sean White snowboarding. It's not as complex as like the old SSXs or anything, but it's it's a cool game, and I'd like to see another one like this from Ubi one day. So we'll see. Uh, I haven't picked up Steep yet, so maybe that'll be the next game I try. Uh, while we're on snowboarding, though, one game I absolutely adore, uh, this from the 360 launch period, Amped 3. I love Amped so much. This game, it <laughs> the first two, I think, were developed like in-house at Microsoft. Uh, I, I forget what the developer's name was, and then this one was done by 2K, so I don't know if it was like an IP deal or, or what, but Amped 3 is ridiculous. It's not the craziest snowboarding game in terms of like tricks and things you can pull off, but like the overall style and flair of this game is just so in your face and it's so, it, it's so 2005. Like, it, it, like going back to this game, it is phenomenal. I would highly recommend it if you're looking for just a really zany snowboarding game. It has a cool soundtrack, lots of great mountains and a really entertaining story mode. So. Highly recommend Amp 3. Check it out. Okay, we're get, beginning to get to the tail end of this right now, but I still got some cool stuff. Uh, so, here we go. Uh, 99 Nights for the 360. Another exclusive. So, want to collect all those exclusives? Got to buy them up. This one was done by Q Entertainment, and if I recall, it was the guy who did uh, the Kingdom Under Fire games on the original Xbox. Uh, from what I hear, it's basically just a Dynasty Warriors clone, but an entertaining enough one. So, I, I, you know, I'd like to check it out. I always remember seeing, like, the trailers for this back in the day. Like, when, when I first got my 360, I was just so enamored that it could go online being, like... And I, I was, like, 10 or 11, at, 10, 10 years old at the time, I think. Yeah. And it would... <laughs> Like, I was just enamored, so I'd download all the music videos, all the trailers, I, every arcade game trial. Like, it was it was a cool time in my life. So, 99 Nights 360 is pretty cheap. If you're collecting for it, you gotta, you gotta get those exclusives. So, very cool. Uh, next one up, I picked this up actually just the other day. Uh, this is Prey on the Xbox One. Uh, the Microsoft Store had it for like $12, I think. So... I've heard some mixed things about the rebooted Prey. I remember really enjoying the original Prey on, on the 360, which I know this is like totally different, but it's Arcane Studios. Uh, a lot of the people I hear that have played this have really enjoyed it, and it's one I'm looking to possibly review. Um, but checking it out, it's pretty cool so far. I'm only about 45 minutes in, but you know, for the 12 bucks, I, I think this was a steal, so excited to check it out more. Okay. All right, for the 360 again, Beatles Rock Band. It, uh, I'm, I, I, I love the Beatles. I love Rock Band. This, uh, let's see. It, when I remember picking this up with my friend uh, at the time, so there used to be a little FYE next to my school, which was like a music store that also sold DVDs and, and games. So. Being that it was in, within walking distance of the school, I would pre-order all my games there at the time. And so Beatles Rock Band, I remember picking up day one because I was just a huge music game fanatic. And again, me and my brothers, it's, it's played through this one. I, I would do the guitar or vocals or, or whatever, and I'd usually have my little brother Magnus on the drums and my other brother Alex would do, we'd trade between guitar and vocals. But Beatles Rock Band was just such a surreal experience. They've got these, these dreamscapes that they called them, where they would, uh, basically for like the studio albums, they would create their interpretation of what like a music video would look like. And it's such 
a, it's such a cool experience to go through their career and play this game. Uh, if you're if you're you're a music game fan, definitely check it out if you can still get any of those instruments. You can only play this on the, the 360 or the Wii or the PS3, so you need an older console to do it. But man, uh, this is a phenomenal music game. Like if you haven't checked it out, it is uh, definitely one of the gems of the last generation. Another game a lot of people like, Deus Ex Human Revolution. Uh, I didn't have this on the 360. My brother had it for OnLive, interestingly enough. We tried that out for a little while. Uh, for those of you who don't remember OnLive, it was uh, one of the first cloud streaming services. So sort of like how PlayStation Now is doing things these days. And if I'm not mistaken, I think Sony might actually have bought uh, the remainder of their assets. Um, not sure at the time, but online was kind of a novel concept. So had Deus Ex on there and uh, Human Revolution. The, the original was like a pre-order bonus at the time. So he played it on there. I've never played Human Revolution, so it's compatible. I love RPGs, I love cyberpunk stuff, so I thought I'd check it out. Okay, definitely getting to the tail end here. Uh, another one. Uh, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, uh, which this is an interesting uh, point to make because I actually got this one and Assassin's Creed for that matter. Uh, I got that free with my Xbox One X uh, Project Scorpio edition. So I was rocking an OG Xbox One for a pretty long time. Uh, I held off on the S, even being an employee and getting, you know, we can get some discounts on that sort of thing. Uh, I held off because I knew that was coming. And man, it's just such an improvement over the original console. It's small. It's quiet. I don't have a 4K TV set up in my house yet, but I mean, it makes everything look a lot sharper than before. And just the performance doing basic things on like the dashboard is, is nice. I, re I really love the system. I do miss my Kinect. I'm definitely someone who's a fan of the voice commands and being able to walk in and turn things on, but I really enjoy it. Uh, as for PUBG though, uh, it, it's pretty cool on console. So I, I do rock it on the PC from time to time. Uh, it's definitely not as smooth on the Xbox, but the advantage on the Xbox is just playing it on a TV, which I know I could connect my desktop up to there. I, I could easily do it. They're not that far from each other, but I hate doing that. I hate having to maneuver with the mouse and like certain menus for games and change my resolution and do all that sort of stuff. So like, I, I like having it on the Xbox and plus it was free with the console anyway. So uh, PUBG, pretty fun game. Played it with a couple folks so far, really enjoying it. All right, and so I have two more games to show you, and two, <laughs> two more games to show you, and these ones are interesting. Uh, so, a couple weeks ago, like two, two or three weeks ago from the, yeah, two, two or three weeks ago, I went up to San Francisco for IGN First Friday. So the, every every uh, every month, IGN does a First Friday where you can go and you like tour the offices. What made this one notable though is uh, they did a special episode of Podcast Unlocked, and uh, we got to be on that. So me and my brother Alex, we drove up from LA and stayed with a friend of mine up there, and it was got a couple days in San Francisco to kind of just walk around, check things out, and. Then we got to tour the offices, and that, that was a really cool experience. I mean, I've said before, I would love to be in games media one day, so getting to kind of be there and see a lot of the people that, uh, you know, I really respect and uh, as, as, I aspire to do that job one day, it, it's really, really cool. So I, I'd, I'd love to, like, work in games media for, like, a professional site or, or, or continue doing this. I mean, you guys know I'm super passionate about the reviews, and I've been writing them since... I was like 10 or so, like I used to write user reviews on GameSpot as like a 10 year old. Uh, anyway, that's beside the point. So uh, moving forward on this episode of Podcast Unlock, which I think is going up shortly at the time of this recording, uh, they did a top 10 360 games uh, of all time where the audience got to vote and kind of just screw up the IGN top 10 list. Uh, but they also had some prizes, so me and my brother both uh, won a prize, and I wanted to show those to you guys. Uh, you could look for that episode soon, but uh, sp spoiler alert, I said uh, that Alan Wake should be the top 360 game, and that is one my personal favorite 360 game. Uh, 
I got a little bumped at the end. You'll see why later on if you check out that episode. But uh, without further ado, uh, the prizes we won were pretty sweet. Uh, I didn't expect to come back from SF with like a hole like this, but first off, uh, my brother Alex won this. This is uh, the Bioshock, the collection, or the 10 year, yeah, the collection, the 10, the 10th anniversary box set. So these are numbered actually. Uh, it comes with the game as well as uh, a big daddy figurine. We haven't opened this yet. We don't really know what we're gonna do with them. Uh, Bioshock, actually a series I missed on the 360 for the most part. I, I, I played through the majority of the first one and quite a bit of Infinite, but I've never finished them, which is pretty sad for someone like me who claims to like love single player RPGs and shooters and that type of thing more than anything. So, uh, might remedy that on the Xbox. I actually already have these games on Steam, but we'll see. But uh, just show you guys real fast. Uh, does uh, comes with the game, obviously. So you got Bioshock the collection. But then also there's a certificate of authenticity. So this uh, one we have is number 76 out out of uh, 5200. So that's pretty cool to have. Uh, may keep it around. I think uh, I definitely want to play these games. So. Seems like a good way to do it. Uh, you guys may have figured that I'm definitely like an Xbox guy for the most part. Uh, I do own the PlayStation. I picked up a PS4 launch day, but man, I I just prefer the controller, frankly speaking. <laughs> like that's the biggest reason. Anyway, uh, the prize that I won, this one's pretty cool too. So I've never been a Resident Evil guy, but when I saw this, I was like, this is, this is the prize I'm gonna go for. So, we, we got to pick our prizes, I don't know if I said that. But I got the uh, Resident Evil 7 Collector's Edition, or, or so I thought. Uh, there is a, a small asterisk on this one, which I didn't realize when I picked it, but uh, this right here, if we pull off the sleeve, is actually a press copy, it looks like. So, it doesn't have the steelbook case, or the game for that matter, I guess that was sent separately to IGN. What it does have is like the house, uh, as well as like the VHS and a couple of the other things, but it also uh, had this uh, note here, and I'll cover up uh, any of the emails or anything like that from Capcom PR, but uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's a press edition, so it didn't have the game included, they sent that separately. But a pretty cool piece to own, uh, I definitely want to pick up Resident Evil, you can see I'm wearing the shirt, I got that at E3 back in 2016. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I need to play these games, I, or I need a good horror game in my life. My, that void's been, like, empty since uh, Dead Space stopped being a thing, and I guess we'll never see any more of that. But, <clears throat> I guess that's it for my pickups. That's uh, everything we picked up over the holiday season and then the uh, last couple months, so to speak. So, I hope that uh, you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I hope to do more of them in the future. and. Definitely, uh, I ho ho hope we can do some more of these, <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, in any case, guys, if you liked this video, uh, I've got a few more you can check out up there, reviews and such. Uh, definitely, if you want to support me, feel free to leave a like down below, and, you know, hey, if you're feeling up to it and you're not a subscriber, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I would love to have you on board. I do lots of reviews. I'm hoping to do, like, some more pickups videos and, like, game hunting and things like that, so... Uh, thanks for watching guys, and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.